Let us consider a general collision where the objects don't have to move in one straight line. Instead, they may move in any directions after the collision, but they still stay in a flat surface. This is called a two-dimensional collision. The general treatment of a two-dimensional collision is write the conservation of momentum in two independent directions, such as x-axis and y-axis. It is flexible to define which is x and which is y. In general, it is beneficial to use the direction of velocity as one axis. As shown in this slide, the momentum now can be written in two dimensions, P1IX plus P2IX equals P1FX plus P2FX. This is in X direction. And then similarly, we can write the Y direction component. P1Y uh, plus P2IY equals P1FY plus P2FY. A two-dimensional collision can be elastic or inelastic or even perfectly inelastic. Knowing the type of collision will make the problem easier to be solved. Let us use this example to discuss how to solve a two-dimensional collision problem. Suppose the following experiment is performed. A 0.250 kilogram object, which is M1, is slid on a frictionless surface into a dark room where it strikes an initially stationary object with mass of 0.400 kg, which is M2. The 0.250 kg object emerges from the room at an angle of 45.0 degrees with its incoming direction. The speed of the 0.250 kg object is originally 2.00 meters per second and is 1.50 meters per second after the collision. Calculate the magnitude and direction of the velocity, which is V2 prime and theta2, of the 0.400 kilogram object after the collision. Now this problem sounds very long and tedious, so to help you understand this problem, I'm showing you a figure where you have a dark room inside M2 is located and actually at rest. So V2 is zero, M2 is given. Now M1 is moving toward M2 and hit it. Now M1 goes at 45 degrees above horizontal and M2, we don't know. We want to know how fast M2 is moving and which direction it is moving in. So this is a typical two-dimensional collision. Let's solve this one. So first, concept of this problem is clear, which is collision of two objects in 2D. And also, based on the property of this problem, because M1 is moving initially horizontally, that's why we can define horizontal as the x-axis and then vertical is going to be y-axis. So we can write these two equations. P1i x plus P2i x equals P1f x plus P2f x and P1i y plus P2IY equals P1FY plus P2FY. We can write these two equations by plugging numbers. So we know that M1 is 0.25, M2 is 0.4. All right, we can write this. The first one, 0.25 times 2 plus 0.4 times 0. All right, equals, now 0.25, we can call this V1FX. 
this is the x component of the final velocity of m1. v1f actually is also called a v1 prime in this case, but we use v1f to be consistent with other defined. And plus p2f, which is 0.4 times v2fx. The second equation can be written as well, which is 0.25 times 0. Why 0? Because initially m1 is not moving in the y direction. There's no y component. So that's why 0 is the velocity in y component. And of course, m2 is still not moving initially, which is still 0. And we have still 0.25 v1fy plus 0.4 v2fy. It looks like there are four unknown variables in these two equations, so mathematically we cannot solve. However, we actually know two of them because we know that v1 fx is the x component of v1 prime and v1 fy is the y component of v1 prime. So both can be solved directly by using um, V1F times cosine 45 degrees or sine 45 degrees. So V1FY is V1F times sine 45 degrees. These two equations are coming from the general decomposition of a vector into two components. So we know uh, V1F actually is equal to point uh, is equal to 1.5, so it's 1.5 times cosine 45, so 1.5 times cosine 45 degrees, and that equals 1.06 meters per second. And this is also same, 1.06 meters per second, because cosine 45 and sine 45 degrees are the same. Now in this two, we can solve for V, 2fx and v2fy. Now v2fx are here and here. So everything else in the equations are known. We can solve them by, in the first equation, it's going to be 0.5 minus 0.25 times 1.06, which is equal to 0.235 meters per second. And the second one is going to be just a zero because everything here, zero, zero minus 0 0.25 times 1.06, which is negative 0 0.265 meters per second. Now, this is not the end of the solving because we are looking for the magnitude and direction. But now we are we are um, we have this components not magnitude and direction so this is the opposite direction of decomposing a vector we're trying to combine the two components and again this is a general treatment if you want to get components i mean if you get one if you want to get magnitude v2f you can just use square root of v2fx square plus v 2fy squared. And this applies to any vector and components. So the answer is equal to 0 0.354 meters per second. For the direction of this vector v2f, we can use tangent inverse of the y component v2fy over v2fx. All right, and this will give us a negative 48.4 degrees. Now, negative 48.4 degrees is actually in the fourth quadrant, and which is consistent with the fact that this vector V2F is in the fourth quadrant because it is positive X component and negative Y component. That is the fourth quadrant vector. So that means the angle is correct. Sometimes you have to be very careful about the angle. Um, for example, if X component is negative, Y component is positive, you still have a negative number, but that 
doesn't make sense because x negative y positive is in the second quadrant. So you have to convert that angle into a second quadrant angle by uh, actually adding 180 degrees. So that have to be taken care of carefully.